Hey everyone, in today's episode, we're going to learn how to use Chaos Scatter to quickly add millions of trees to your scene. Let's start by creating a Chaos Scatter object. You can find this tool in the command panel under Chaos Scatter or on its own toolbar. If you don't see the toolbar, just right click in an empty space on 3ds Max main toolbar and select the Chaos Scatter toolbar to turn it on. With Chaos Scatter selected, click and drag in your viewport to create it. Don't worry about the size of the icon. This is just a visual guide and it's not going to affect your scene or the final output. Now, head over to the Modify panel to start making some adjustments. The first thing we're going to do is to decide where we want to place our objects. You can do this in the Distribute on Target Object section. Just click the plus icon and select the ground objects where you want your trees to appear. For this example, I'm going to select this terrain that has around 500 by 500 meters. I'm also going to keep everything with solid colors so it's easier to see the forest and the changes we're going to be doing. After you have chosen your ground object, it's time to add the models you want to scatter. For this example, let's use a few trees from the Chaos Cosmos library that I already have in the scene. You can add them one by one by clicking the plus icon in the Instant Model Object section. But if you have a lot of objects, this can take a while. Instead, you can use the Include Exclude panel to add all the objects at once. This panel also lets you quickly select and add multiple objects using selection sets. Once you have added all your objects and changed it to the Include list, click the OK button. You will see your viewport update, showing all the trees scattered across the ground. Now, something important is to check that the pivot points of your objects are in the right spot. Usually, for trees, you want these to be at the base and center. For example, one of the trees in the scene is floating, and this is because the pivot is a few meters below the tree. You can quickly fix this by going to the hierarchy panel and selecting Affect Pivot Only. This lets you move the pivot closer to the base of the object. You can also use a Snaps or the Align tool to be more precise. Another handy option is to use a Pivot Placer tool, like the one from the Corona Render Power tool. For this example, we will keep the mode set to Bounding Bot change the set axis to minimum and leave the offset at zero. Then press start preview to see how it looks. If everything is good and the pivot is at the right place, press the apply button. So far, our small forest is looking great, but let's say you want to control how often certain types of trees show up compared to the others, like having fewer trees of some species to make it look more natural. You can adjust the frequency of each object to do this. For example, if you want fewer yellow trees, you can change the frequency to 0.4, reducing their number in the scene. And if you want more, you can increase the frequency. You can do this for all the trees to find the perfect balance. Next, let's start an interactive render to see how the scene looks. You might notice that there are not enough trees to cover the ground. To fix this, you can increase the number of trees by adjusting the count in the surface scattering section. Let's try changing the count to 2000. Now, there is a problem. It looks almost the same. This is because we have reached the maximum number of instances. Let's scroll down a bit to the display and limit section and change the max instances to 5000. This controls the maximum number of objects that can be shown in the viewport. If you have more objects than this limit, some will be hidden to keep your computer running smoothly. Let's go back to the surface scattering section and then change the count to 4000 to see the difference. This works well, but there is a catch. If you make the ground bigger, the trees will spread out more, making the forest look less dense. If you make the ground smaller, the trees will bunch up, making the forest look too crowded. This could be a problem if you plan to use this scatter as a template for other projects with different ground sizes. To solve this, you can check the per square option. This changes how the count works. Instead of scattering a fixed number of objects, it lets you control the density based on the area. For example, if you want the objects to be placed close together, you can decrease the per square value. For our forest, if you set the count to 10, exactly 10 trees will be scattered across the entire surface, no matter how big or small it is. But if you enable per square and set the count to 50, 
and the first square value to 100 meters, then 50 trees will be scattered for every 100 by 100 meters area of the surface. This allows to keep the density consistent and set a more accurate forest, even if the surface size changes. But for this example, it's too little. Let's change it to 50 trees each 50 square meters. You can also use a texture to affect the scatter density. For example, you could apply a black and white map. To simplify the visualization of this, I'm going to use a simple gradient map where black areas don't receive any scatter and white areas receive the full density. Gray areas will be a scatter density based on the intensity of the gray, which allow for creating cluster of objects in some areas and fewer objects in others. This is useful if you want your forest to have a more natural clearing or patches with dense trees. If you have forest pack installed, you can use any of the maps that come with it, or you can even create your own maps with Photoshop for accurate results. Now that we have added more trees, we might run into a situation where some of them could collide with each other. To handle this, you can turn on the Avoid Collision options in the scattering section. This option is really helpful because it ensures that instances like trees, rocks, or any other scattered object don't overlap or intersect with each other. Just keep in mind that turning on this option may reduce the total number of instances in your scene. This happens because some objects will be discarded to avoid collisions. Let's leave it at 50 or 40%. Now that we have set the density and collisions, let's fit any trees that are not standing upright. This might happen because of the way the surface normals are set. To fix this, scroll down to the transformation section and change the normal versus set setting to 1.0. You will see all the trees pointing straight up. We can change it back to zero and then to one to see the difference. In the same transformation section, you can add some randomness to your objects, which helps create a more natural scene. It's usually best to skip translation for these type of objects, as it can mess up the placement of the vegetation. We would leave rotation as is. The default settings create a random rotations from zero to 360 degrees, which works well for most vegetation, as this can show the trees from different angles. For the scale, this depends on your objects and scene. I like to start with a 30 to 40% difference. So let's set the low value at 65 and leave the high value at 100. For this scene, that looks good. But remember to adjust these values based on the specific needs of your projects. Sometimes you may want to increase the size of the trees or even decrease it more. Moving into the area section. This is one of my favorite ones as it has one of the coolest features of Chaos Scatter. The ability to decide where your object should or shouldn't be scattered using a spline. You can use any spline, but make sure it's fully close to avoid any problems. First, you will want to start by defining the area where you want your trees to appear. Let's say that we only want the forest to cover a few specific sections of the ground. To do this, you would use the Spline Includes option. Go ahead and draw a spline around the area where you want your forest to be. Once your spline is ready, add it to the Spline Includes list in the Chaos Scatter. Now, you will notice the trees only appear inside the area defined by your spline. Next, let's say there is a clearing in the forest where you want to place a lake, a house, or other type of vegetation. You will definitely don't want trees growing in this spot. So, this is where the spline exclude options come in handy. Draw another spline around the area where this object will sit and add this spline to the spline exclude list. Now, you will see that they appear everywhere except inside this clearing. A quick tip, the position of the spline doesn't matter. It can be above or below the surface, but I recommend keeping your splines a few meters above the surface, using a bright color and naming them with the spline at the beginning or end. This makes it easier to find and select them later. To add more realism, we can also adjust the forest to gradually thin out as it gets closer to the lake. For this, we use the near far setting. Select the spline you use for the spline exclude list and then adjust the near far follow distance. This creates a buffer zone around the spline. Within this buffer zone, the trees will start to disappear gradually, giving you a natural looking transition from dense forest to an open area. This also works for the include spline, but 
in the opposite way. By increasing the values, we add more trees. And to add even more realism, you can use the scale option. Let's say you want the trees to get smaller as they approach the clearing around the lake. By adjusting the scale factor, you can make the trees gradually shrink in size as they get closer to the spline, enhancing the natural feel of the scene. Lastly, you may want the forest to be denser in some areas and sparser in others. The density option allows you to control this. By tweaking the density settings within the fallout zone, you can make the forest appear thicker where you want more coverage and thinner where you want the trees to be less crowded. If you don't want the scale and density effects to happen, you can set the near and far values to be the same. This will remove both the density and the scale effects. Now that we got the basics of Chaos Scattered down, let's see how we can set it up faster using presets. Presets are available in Chaos Cosmos, which is like a big library filled with ready-made 3D models, materials, HGRIs, and more. These assets are perfect for quickly building your scene without starting from scratch. So let's open the Chaos Cosmos browser and look for the preset category. Here, you will find a bunch of pre-made scatter setups that you can use to get your scene going quickly, and you can tweak them as needed. For this example, let's use a grass preset. When you click on it, you will see all the different assets it includes. Keep in mind that downloading this preset might take a little longer since it needs to download all the included models first. Once it's ready, you can select the object you want to scatter on, which in our case is the same ground we use for the trees. Just click Import, and this will create a new scatter object and apply it to the ground. First, we're going to select where we want the grass. In this case, I only want the grass in some areas around the lake, which can be helpful for close-up shots. To make sure the grass grows only where we want it, I will quickly add some spline areas to guide the scatter. Once everything is set, let's start an interactive render to see how it looks. The grass can be a bit tricky, as it might extend beyond the include-exclude areas and start overlapping with other objects. We can fix this by enabling the edge trimming option in the surface scattering section. We also need to add the chaos scatter edge trimming text map to the opacity map of the material of the model. So far, this has not been automated and it needs to be done manually for all the materials or objects. However, there is an amazing unofficial script in the Corona forums made by fraud. I'm going to leave the link in the description. You just need to drag and drop the script to the 3ds Max window. Then open the customized user interface and select the toolbars option. Search for Racky T and add the script to one of your toolbars. To use it, simply select the objects or materials and press the button. To remove the edge trimming map, do the same but press Shift on your keyboard and then the button. Okay, once we have added the edge trimming map, we can see how it makes our grass to stay neatly within the scattered area borders. If you notice any empty spaces, you can increase the count a bit more to fill them in. Our forest and grass is looking really good, but the color is too uniform. In real life, we're going to find difference in the color. Some areas might have fresh green grass and others could have dry, creating a mix of different shades. To add this variation, we can use a texture to add some details and project it over the scatter. We will do this by using the Scatter Surface Color Texture in the Material Editor, which you can find in the Chaos Scatter Texture section. Let's create one. You can either use the diffuse color of the ground surface, which in the case of this example is not going to work because I have a solid gray color. Another option is to specify a custom map. For this example, I'm going to use a map of a grass field, which has different shades of green and yellow. We just need to plug this map into the map slot. Then we will plug it into the base color of the grass material that we're scattering. Now, as you can see, the details are projected into the grass, making it look more natural. We can also add some hue and gamma randomization, which can be great, but be careful not to overdo it, as this can make the grass look really unnatural. One more tip, if the texture effect is too intense and you don't like how the colors look, you can easily blend it with the original grass color. Just create a Corona mix map, then plug in both maps, one to the top and the other to the base, and then adjust the mix amount and mix operation to blend to tone down the surface color. Using this technique, you can quickly create detailed grass, 
making it look more realistic without spending hours tweaking each little detail. One last optimization option we can use is the camera clipping. This will clip the instances based on the camera view. You can automatically select the active camera or you can specify a camera. For most scenes, I recommend to use the active camera option, especially if you have multiple cameras. We also have the option to extend the view, which is helpful to add more instances behind the camera. And lastly, we can also use the near and far override. For example, if we set the far override to 50 meters, only the objects at 50 meters from the camera will be visible and all the instances will be clipped away. This can be used to clip, for example, grass that is behind a fence or trees that are really far away from the camera. Now that we have set up a basic forest and explored some of the most common options, let's look at the display settings. These settings won't change how your objects look in the final render, but they can help you to work faster and more smoothly while setting up your scene. First, let's check out the preview type setting. This decides how the scattered objects appear in your viewport. If you're working with vegetation, it's a good idea to use the points cloud or bots option. This makes your viewport run faster. Using the full mesh might look better, but it can slow down your viewport, especially if you have a lot of objects. Next, we have the match instances. These control the maximum number of objects that will be shown in the viewport. If you have more objects than this limit, some will be hidden to keep your computer running smoothly. If you want to see more objects, you can increase this number, but be careful to not slow down your computer too much. If you're using the full preview type, you will see a match polygon option. This setting limits how many polygons are shown in the viewport. If you go over this limit, some details will be hidden to keep everything running smoothly. The update automatically setting is also important. If this is turned off, your scatter objects won't update every time you make a change. This can save some performance on your screen, but you're not going to have a real-time visualization of the changes you're doing. Lastly, there is the Update Now button, which works with the previous one. If your update automatically is off, you can press this button to manually update the scatter whenever you want. And this is it for the basics of Chaos Scatter. With these options, you can start creating your own fields and forests. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.